It is 648. This is your morning in eight minutes. Right now, a Blunt County family needs your help finding a missing teen. Take a look at your screen. The sheriff's office says 18 year old Garrett McCamus was last seen on Friday. The family member says the last time someone was in contact with him was around 1130 on Friday night when he texted a friend saying he was having trouble breathing and was at a pull off on Highway 129, also known as the Dragon or Calderwood Highway. At last check, Garrett's phone was turned off. Here's a picture of the Garrett's car. It's a silver 2012 Kia Sorento with Tennessee tags BQF1385. He was last seen wearing a black hoodie and has a cast on his right hand. Deputies and family members have been searching near Highway 129, the Foothills Parkway, since Sunday. Garrett does have a medical condition that could make it hard to make it back on his own. If you see Garrett or the car, please call the police immediately. We'll update you as soon as we learn more. And KPD needs your help this morning. Police continue to investigate the murder of a 47 year old man. And this happened earlier this month in the Western Heights area. KPD says around 830 that night, Dorian Steely was shot outside of a home in the 1300 block of Stair Avenue. Investigators say Steely was taken to UT Medical Center in a personal vehicle and died shortly after. Officials say there could have been multiple potential witnesses to the shooting, but as of right now, no one's come forward. No suspects have been arrested or no one's been charged. If you know anything, call police. We'll continue to bring you any updates as soon as we get them inside your WVLT News app. And county leaders are working to improve ambulance services in Knox County. Officials hired an outside firm to take a closer look at how they operate. When you call an ambulance, you expect them to get there fast. But that's not always the case in Knox County. Fitch and Associates report pointed out that AMR and the county changed their standard response times from 10 to 17 minutes. According to the report, AMR is 65% staffed. So here's what's happening now. AMR is working to train more people and fill those jobs. Meanwhile, there are four companies bidding for this contract with the county, including AMR. Fitch and Associates expects to have a recommendation by the end of the week. They'll bring it to the county commission in November. We know this matters to you. You can count on us to ask the tough questions and update you as we learn more inside the WVLT News app. In Middle Tennessee, a man from Honduras, twice deported from the U.S., is charged in the murders of two men. And police say he shot the two men days apart and put their bodies into the trunks of cars. 31-year-old Kevin Castro Garcia is charged. The first murder happened on September 27th. Investigators say they found Elmer Miranda Martinez's body badly burned in the woods. Police say more than a week later, they found Brandon Rivas Noriega's body, who'd been reported missing. Police say the 26 year old was in the trunk of his mother's car and shot several times. The investigation is still underway. Also in Middle Tennessee, Murfreesboro police are looking for other possible victims after a man was arrested for exposing himself to a teen over the weekend. The suspect is a director of Middle Tennessee State Football. Nicholas Woodley has since been suspended and is charged with indecent exposure and resisting arrest. The teenage girl says Woodley came up to her, complimented her outfit, and moved a shopping basket from his waist, exposing himself. Police say Woodley went back to the target the next day and visited the store for the past five days. The investigation is ongoing, but detectives are asking for any possible victims to call police. And a manhunt is underway for four inmates who escaped from jail in Bibb County, Georgia. That's just 80 miles from Atlanta. One of the men who escaped charged with murder. The first inmate on your screen, Joey Fournier, is accused of strangling his ex-girlfriend. The other three inmates are charged with several different crimes, including aggravated assault and drug and gun charges. Authorities say they got out through a broken window, then through a large hole that had been cut in the fence. They left in a waiting car. The entire county, the entire area in that part of Georgia on high alert. The fugitives could be anywhere. We'll keep you updated. And President Joe Biden set to land in Israel tomorrow as the United Nations warns that the crisis is getting worse. Israel's military is preparing for a ground invasion. More than 4,200 people have been killed on both sides. 30 of them are Americans. White House officials say the president will push for humanitarian aid into Gaza and work on releasing hostages. According to the UN, no water, food or other types of assistance have gone into Gaza for nearly 10 days. The Pentagon is preparing U.S. troops for a potential deployment. President Biden is also expected to travel to Jordan to meet with King Abdullah, as well as Palestinian and Egyptian leaders. 
And in Kentucky, voters will elect a governor in less than a month. Governor Andy Bashir and his Republican challenger, State Attorney General Daniel Cameron, debated several issues last night. They clashed on abortion in the wake of the U.S. Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade last year. Like Tennessee, Kentucky's trigger law bans abortion in all cases, except when the life of the mother is in jeopardy, with no exceptions for cases of rape or incest. Cameron said he would sign a bill adding those exceptions. Bashir called Cameron's views wrong and extreme. The debate was their second of five ahead of the November 7th election. Well, if you bought a lottery ticket in the past two months, you helped the Tennessee Education Lottery Corporation set a new record. The records for a first quarter transfer to the lottery for education account. From the start of July to the end of September, the corporation says revenues went up nearly 6% compared to the same time last year. The deposit was more than $133 million, marking the highest for any first quarter since the lottery started in 2004. The Tennessee Lotteries raised more than $7 billion for education programs across the state. It is 6.54. We want to get a check of your first alert traffic with Kristen Allen. Good morning, guys. Yeah, we first alerted you to this crash in your WBLT news app. Still seeing backups from this crash on 40 westbound near the Rutledge Pike area. That left lane is still blocked this morning. And we're really seeing those backups all the way past the east end of I-640 this morning. So you're going to want to take an alternate route. Maybe consider taking Asheville Highway West if you are needing to head out that way this morning. Taking a look at those drive times. You're on time on 75 South and 640 West, but 40 West from Asheville Highway to Paper Mill Drive. Only moving about 33 miles an hour this morning, taking you 18 minutes along that route. So make sure you're giving yourself plenty of time. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. 655 now today would be a pretty good day to get outside and get some yard work done, especially while we're still on the cooler side, right? Sometimes doing that yard work can be more comfortable when it is a little chilly. Now the key here is that we are warming up. We're coming off of that very cold day yesterday, but today we have a light cool breeze. So really maybe knocking out some yard work today. You prefer sunshine, a warmer day? Well, you got it tomorrow. That's why it's really my pick of the week just for being outdoors, maybe doing some things that are fun outside for a nice fall day on Wednesday. But the key here is Thursday is a little warmer, still mild, but it's also windier. And then a couple of those showers and storms start to head this way ahead of that front for the end of the week. So I wanted to give you a heads up on those changes that you will see and feel for the next couple of days in case you want to get outside. For now, we're still working on this choppy cooling under these layers of clouds with fog forming in the southern valley where you have a clear sky and colder temperatures. It is 37 in Athens, tucked in under that blanket. Knoxville's 47, along with Newport and 49 La Follette. Clouds make a big difference in how much you can cool during the overnights, and that's exactly what we're feeling this morning. But at least those clouds are headed out along with just that stray rain chance. That puts us at 56 at noon with a high today of 63. Next couple of days, like I said, we're recovering to right around 70, just turning breezy on Thursday. But I am tracking that rain Thursday night into Friday. How much you can expect where you live. Very important since we've had some very pitiful rains recently. <laughs> so there is at least some better news there. I've got that for you coming up at 7 on the CW. Yeah, I'm done with the pitiful rains. So if it's going <laughs> to rain, break pitiful. it down. All right. At 6.56, we'll see you over on the CW Knoxville. Have a good Tuesday.